Welcome everybody to Watermelon Wednesday's 20th anniversary season, and we're halfway through. <laughs> halfway through the season. And I think halfway through the series, so we got 20 more years. <laughs> I will still be young in 20 years, relative to some of you. <laughs> uh, now, I'm delighted to have this, this, this band, uh, which... Uh, was once known by the name of Night Tree, at least some of them were, but Julian, who's going to play percussion, is going to explain to you the sort of family tree of this group of uh, wonderful musicians, mainly, I think, from New England Conservatory, uh, but one did a year or two at Berkeley, so, you know, they mix it up a little. Anyway, and I'll also, I'll let you decide what kind of uh, uh, music it is that you're about to hear, because I'm not, I'm not going out on a limb except, oh, it's folk music, right? Yeah. Folk music. So, but it's not singing, it's mostly instrumental. So, I'm very excited to have a new group to Watermelon Wednesdays and um, a young group who will no doubt be totally unaffordable next year. <laughs> and because, and you're part of the problem because you're going to go out and buy all their CDs or whatever they do anymore. Do you guys do CDs? Yeah. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's our Emerging Artist Series. I just made that up. <laughs> They've already emerged full time, as you'll hear. So without further ado, further ado, I'd like to bring on Fade Blue for their first Watermelon Wednesday.
Is this on? Yes, a little bit. Thank you so much for being here. This is such a beautiful land that you live on. It's incredible. <laughs> um, we had this amazing dinner with fresh salad from Paul's garden with some fresh tomatoes that Yaniv told me he can't stop thinking about. Um, if I make any mistakes, it's because I'm still thinking about the tomatoes. <laughs> Such, yeah, and beautiful dogs and cattle and it's so green. Um, you know, we're coming from Boston, which is a New York City, but, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's getting there. Um, it's just, we were talking on the drive here, like, it's so incredible to live in this part of the country because when we do gigs out around New England, we get to come out to these places that are just immaculate. You know, for me, I'm originally from St. Louis, and in the, in the fall and winter, like driving up through Vermont or New Hampshire or New York State, um, it's like what I think of as postcards or things that you find in a shop, and then I come out here and it's like, that's just what it is. Um, <laughs> But in a way, it's sort of like, if, you have, you, if any of you have been to like uh, France or Italy or things and, and you go, you sort of realize that the painters that we study and, and appreciate, that maybe they like weren't so creative that they were literally just <laughs> like, that's just what it is. <laughs> like I found, I was recently lucky to go to Paris and go to Giverny where Monet's house is and got to see the ponds and the lily pads and and the green um, bridge, it's like a small bridge. Um, and it was kind of like one of those things, and my love for Monet grew so much there, but it also was like, wow, he, he just didn't have a camera yet. <laughs> so, yeah. um, love you, Monet. Um, I'm gonna let these two, we're gonna switch it up and uh, kind of smooth out the vibes here. Um, we have Lily Honigberg on the fiddle and now on the concertina, Yaniv Jacobi on the bazooki, now on the accordion, James Dale on the bass. My name's Julian Lawyer, we're gonna keep the music coming. Hi everyone, how's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> um, we're so happy you're here. I just wanted to share with you really quick. So um, this is a concertina. Has anyone heard of this instrument? Yes, amazing. So I hadn't really heard of this instrument until about two years ago when Julian and I were at a conference. Um, it was in Kansas City that year called Folk Alliance International. And let me tell you, Folk Alliance International is crazy. It's just, it's just a crazy idea. I don't know who thought of it. They were crazy and brilliant. That you put 3,000 folk musicians in a hotel. <laughs> for not one night, but four. And the music starts, not in the afternoon, but at 10 p.m. <laughs> all night, all night long it goes. So there was, there was an amazing concertina there um, named Mawson. And, He's in this group called Talisk. They're a wonderful trio from Scotland, and he was he was playing the concertina, and his his uh, jeans were ripped at the knee from bouncing with the concertina on it. Yeah, 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 that's how he ripped them. Um, so this is a concertina. I, I just wanted to show you my my favorite sound. It is not any of the buttons. It is that make a pitch. It's the air button, and this is what it sounds like. Right. So whenever I, I need to take a deep breath on tour or backstage, I just... <laughs> yeah. So we're going to play a couple of tunes for you now. Um, they, these instruments don't match colors on purpose, but we were super thrilled when they did. Um, should be fade red. <laughs> fade red, yeah. Um, so the first tune we're going to play is a tune that my boyfriend wrote. Um, it's called Moat, and it's inspired by medieval music. And I'm super grateful that he wrote it because this concertina can really only play in a couple of keys. I'm missing a lot of notes. So this is like one of the tunes I can actually play on it. <laughs> um, and the second tune, we're gonna go into a Scottish waltz.
Thank you so much, James Dale on the on the acoustic bass. So I want to tell you a little bit about who's up here. So a little bit to cover here, but so Fade Blue is a, a contemporary folk composers collective, or contemporary composers folk collective. Um, all those C words. So each of us do compose, um, and that's sort of what was the genesis of this group. I, I was wanting to create a space for people who aren't necessarily, um, well, here's the, the thing, I play percussion, and that's not really in the Irish tradition, um, or at least this instrument behind me, which I'll tell you more about later, is not necessarily in the tradition. So every time I participate in the music, it's gonna sort of be contemporary. Um, and I wanted to create a space for us and the people who are hear the music sort of similarly to me to have a space to play this music and to put a bass and have James put some like substitute jazz chords in and maybe you need to be like, what if we did this here? And Lily be like, well, what if we changed the arrangement here? Or what if I added this note? I wanted a space for us to do that because sometimes traditional music can get really locked in itself and I love that music and I love those people. But for my voice and some of my peers' voices, it's uh, the way we express the music is a little differently and we have many different backgrounds. So Lily's was raised in a very classical background, I think I can say, and I'll let her speak for herself um, as well. But as well as improvising, Yaniv came up in also some classical background um, as well as, but we all listen to a ton of music. I came up in a, a blues and rock background and then into classical and Latin music and all sorts of different things. And James and I shared that uh, we played jazz together. That's how we met at NEC, we were in the big band there and all of us have played klezmer music and Swedish music and all sorts of different stuff. And so I think this group expresses just plainly who we are. There's no sort of like, we do this or we don't do this. It's, we're just trying to be ourselves. And I think when we do that, we res we, when we resonate the most with ourselves, I think we resonate with other people. So that's sort of the idea of the group is to just give a space for us all to just express the music the way that we're hearing it while still, you know, we're not like playing metal with this stuff. You know, we're not like going way out, you know, but it's, it's the way we hear it and the way we respect the music. Um, so that's a little bit about this, this group. Um, and we're gonna play some more tunes for you. Yeah, thank you. So before we play the next set, I just wanted to ask a question, which is um, how many of you seen this instrument before? Raise your hand if you've seen it before. Yeah, that's great. Um, so this is, for those of you who have not seen this before, this is um, an Irish bouzouki, um, which is, it's sort of a funny name for an instrument. Um, and it originated in Greece um, around, I think, the 1960s, when um, sort of the icons of the I Irish folk revival uh, came back from Greece, bringing back with them Greek bouzoukis. Um, and they were so enamored by the instrument, they decided to find a home for it within the Irish tradition. Um, so the instrument is actually very similar to a, a mandolin. It's, it's tuned almost identically, just down an octave, so, so a lot lower. Uh, but there is usually in the traditional tuning sort of one, one difference, which is one string that is tuned down. And the reason why it's tuned down is for the instrument to be in what's called an open tuning, which means that to get a nice sound, you don't need to put your fingers in many places on the instrument because most of the strings already resonate uh, in, 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 to, in, in a pitch that is already uh, nice to hear for whatever tune you're playing. Um, so to give you sort of a, a quick demonstration, I'm just gonna uh, play you a quick tune before Lily and I play a duo together. Thank you. 
a set of tunes for you now as a, as a duo. It's a really nice um, combination. A lot of times it will be fiddle and guitar, um, but it's, it's awesome, fiddle and bazooki. And the, the first tune I learned from a wonderful fiddler who's actually the reason I learned to play fiddle about five years ago. Um, his name is Martin Hayes. Has anyone oh, heard of him? <laughs> yes, Martin. <laughs> um, and Martin, yeah, Martin, Martin is amazing. And actually, his video from the Watermelon Wednesday series is on YouTube. And I've listened to it so many times. I won't say how many times because okay. it's being recorded. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I couldn't quite remember where, where I had heard Watermelon Wednesdays. And I walked into this room today and I was like, Martin. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so, so this tune is uh, it's really special. He was here playing, and now, now we're going to play this tune. It's called The Golden Castle. And from there, we're going to play a tune called uh, Return to Helsinki, and then end with the mother and child reel.
Okay. Lily Honigberg and Yanina Jacoby. Thank you. I wanna, um, we like to switch things up in Faith Blue. We like to experiment. We like to try things out. Um, Lily playing concertina is uh, not something she normally does, but I like to encourage her to do it, and she likes to encourage me to encourage her to do it. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and grew up around all the music there. It's sort of a lot of some winds from the West Coast, from winds from the East Coast, and North and South. Um, a lot of different influences there. Um, but I just grew up having music have a special place in my mind. And as I grew older, I've always been really into visual art, but I, I started to realize that they were sort of the same to me. Um, and as I talked more to different artists about it, people started to say, hey, Julian, I think you have this thing called synesthesia, which is where you hear color. Um, so the note E in my mind is yellow, and the note C is, is orange, and A is red, C sharp is like a, a brighter orange, G is green, B is blue actually, um, A flat is burgundy, um, it's really weird, um, <laughs> I am crazy. Um, but it's something that I have come to sort of know and accept and has influenced a lot of my composing. Um, and I, I'll be putting out my first solo record of original music on September 6th for, with an album called Fade Blue. And um, that is available today, if you like. Um, it's also, you can get it with my um, album of Bach music for the marimba and vibraphone. There's a, there's a lot going on up here. Um, <laughs> but you're welcome to pick that up if you'd like. Um, this is a song called Baby Blue. Um, and it's about a girl I met. And she was so pretty and took, kind of took my fancy so much that she inspired, inspired me to write my first song. And this is that song. Like clouds of white 
like clouds of white. Alisa, you are my baby blue, orange and gold, brown and white. Alisa, like we've got one more for you on this set. Um, could we have another round of applause for Julian? It takes a lot of courage to get up in front of a group of strangers and sing, and I so admire you for doing that. So, um, this is probably a question you were not expecting to be asked tonight. Who has ever taken a Pilates class? Oh, look at you guys go. Heck yeah. So in March, um, I decided to get my certification to become an Inferno Hot Pilates instructor. So you thought Pilates was bad. Wait till you crank that room up to 100 degrees. Oh yeah, it gets a lot better. Um, so I decided to take this training. I've been practicing Inferno Hot Pilates for about a year, um, and I just loved it so much. It really balanced my life of touring and performing and teaching and going to school and just everything. Um, and I had an amazing mentor through the whole process, and her name is Shelly. She's from North Carolina. Um, we both really love dogs. We love Paul and Claudia's dogs, if you haven't met them, very special Finn and Bear. Um, <laughs> um, so I wrote these next tunes for her, and the first one is in D major, and it's, um, it's called Mother Hen. So Shelly, she owns this hot yoga studio in Harvard Square, and she kind of, you know, she's brought in all of these new instructors. She's really been like a leader for us. Um, and the second tune is called Shelly's Jig. We jump into D minor, and that's kind of when, when Shelly's teaching class, she means business. So we, we go to D minor for that. <laughs> also, um, these tunes are being recorded. I'm recording them in the fall with a cellist named McKinley James. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of her. She's a good friend of ours from New England Conservatory. And Jan Falquette, who's coming here with Chanticorum. I think it was September 18th, you said they'll be here. Um, and I have a mailing list. You can go to lilyhonigberg.com and sign up for that. Um, and that's a brand new thing for me. And this is my first time in public saying that email list. It's done. It's out there. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's like what I was most nervous about for tonight. So now we, now we can enjoy it. <laughs>
gonna play a little Cajun waltz for you called Turn Turn My Baby Creole. Um, it's a lovely little waltz and I learned it at New England Conservatory um, where we all met. say something, but I'm from Australia, so I'm sorry that there's no subtitles, and hopefully you can understand <laughs> my accent. Is, uh, but it's so great to be here. Uh, as already mentioned, we've come up from Boston, and it's just so beautiful here, so thank you for having us. Uh, we're going to continue 
with a piece. This is an interesting thing. See, as mentioned, I, I'm sort of the imposter in this group because I'm actually a jazz musician. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they all play jazz, but I did my major in, in jazz, so it's a, it's a real challenge to approach this music uh, from what I'm used to, how I'm used to performing the bass. Uh, but the other thing that I'd, I'd like to sort of dedicate this next tune to is to Bach. Because as a bassist, Bach is the, the broccoli of the instrument. If you can play Bach on bass, you can do anything. <laughs> so we're going to do some tribute to Bach. And uh, Edgar Meyer is a really uh, big hero of mine. And uh, I'm going to some more tunes. So thank you.
<laughs> um, thank you so much. We're gonna play one more for you and maybe an encore. Um, I, I just was thinking while James was speaking, um, I met James when I was practicing one day in the conservatory. I was, I was in a practice room and I'd seen him around and you know, everyone's like, oh, this bass player from Australia is so amazing. And um, yeah, really. <laughs> um, and, and he walked by my practice room and we, we kind of made like quick eye contact and then I, I like looked back at my music and next thing I knew he was he kind of like knocked on the, he knocked once and then he kind of walked right in and I was like, oh, okay. Um, and, and, he, and he said, hi, um, I'm James and I, I was in a lesson, I might butcher this a little bit, I was, I was in a lesson the other day and my, my teacher said, you know, you play jazz, but what music do you really love? And I realized I love Celtic music, can you help me? <laughs> and look how far he's come. <laughs> Yes. I'll tell a little story about Yaniv here. So, Yaniv and I started as classical percussionists, um, both of us, at New England Conservatory studying with Will Hudgens and Dan Bausch, guys who are like the principal percussionists of the BSO. And um, I had heard about this kid who was um, playing Celtic tunes on the marimba, and I used to walk by, much I was probably James in this situation, I used to walk by and be like, who is that guy playing Celtic tunes on the marimba? Like, I want his life. Um, <laughs> as I was like playing triangle excerpts and stuff like that. Like, I mean, you know. And then before we knew it, uh, Yaniv went off to Ireland and came back like one of, you know, the most beloved uh, bazooki players in, in Boston and in New England. So um, it's funny how where we start and where we end up. Um, also another, that was ridiculous. Right? That was insane. What you just did, like the Bach thing, that was crazy. That was totally ridiculous. Um, again, we're going to play one more tune. Maybe another one. Um, thank you for being here again. This group is called Fade Blue. Um, some people were asking me, like, oh, is this player, where's this player? And it's always going to be different, but it's always going to be great musicians coming together and, and hopefully you know, great friends coming and sharing music with you all. So thank you for sharing that with us. Please sign up on Lily or I's mailing list. Um, again, I have a solo record. If anyone's heard of Maeve Gilchrist, the harpist, yeah, yeah. She produced um, the solo record I have coming out in September. Just about to put out a couple singles. I have a show coming up at Passim, if you have any friends in Boston. Um, again, we have, Lily and I played in this really incredible group called Nitri for a couple years. There's some CDs out there of music we've been playing tonight and, and beyond. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Paul and Claudia, is that correct? and the dogs, and the food, and all of you. Um, please continue to support live music and musicians. Um, we hope to see you again soon. than a bazooki player tuning a bazooki. <laughs> one bazooki player tuning one bazooki. <laughs> one bazooki player having to tune two bazookis right? <laughs> after another. I was trying to think of a banjo joke, but you killed it with this. <laughs> <laughs>
Jericho Barnacero, the music is probably on the Bajinki, James Dale on the bass, my name is Julian Moyda, we are Faye Jervis, thank you so much. Thank you. Would you like to do one more? Yeah? Okay, we can do one more. We can do one more. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. This is like a dream. Um, I'll do one more for you. This last one is going to be one that I wrote. Um, I'm really into Cuban music. I'm really into Brazilian music too, but really into Cuban music. I discovered it when I was in high school. The teacher introduced me to rumba and folkloric music from Cuba, and I just it just kind of pierced me and studied it throughout undergrad and graduate school. And um, so I was a classical percussionist throughout undergrad and graduate school and towards the end of it, um, my teacher, my classical teacher was like, you should s study composition, you should do some time. And so before I left NEC, I did something many people <laughs> kind of never do, which was I stopped studying with the BSO percussionist and I went to study uh, jazz composition with Ken Shaphorst, who's head of the jazz department at NEC. And in that, we kind of developed a way for me to bring these worlds together of uh, Celtic and Cuban. And so this piece is a Celtic-Cuban piece called Oya, and is, uh, Oya is the only Cuban deity in the Cuban pantheon that is a, she's female and she's a warrior. She's the only, only female warrior in the whole pantheon. And I'm surrounded by many, many women who are warriors, especially in Boston and Massachusetts and things, and my mom is one as well. And this is just kind of dedicated to all the, all the people fighting the good fight. So, oh yeah, thank you so much for being here, and we hope to see you soon next time. Um, I just want to say uh, personally thank you to each and every one of you for being here, being present in this room tonight, and special thanks to Paul and Claudia for keeping a beautiful tradition alive and growing, and it's so meaningful to us, and it's just so amazing. So thank you guys. Thank you, Paul and Claudia.
Oh, yeah, yeah. I knew.